So welcome to the Maryland 58 Editor's Brief. And I'll try to keep it brief, but uh, we'll see, see how it goes. Okay, so uh, I, I put together a slide deck, and the slide deck is just to make sure I don't forget anything. And I, I've been doing that a little bit past a couple of weeks, so, uh, so bear with me. It may not be in a traditional order. Here we go. All right, first topic, uh, range duty. Uh, it, it is a little bit of a light uh, turnout year for NARAM, so we kind of need uh, everybody that we have that's competing. So if you're assigned to range duty, uh, we want you to show up for all your shifts. And we'll decide whether or not we need you. Like some, some, some of the days, for instance, on the multi-round days, where we just have one multi-round event, uh, if you're a timer, we still want you to come. Or, or uh, no, returns, what I'm thinking. Return, we, if you're a returns person, we still want you to come, because we might need you in timing. Uh, we, we have kind of, kind of a short list of timers this year. Uh, so we'd like you to show up for range duty a little bit early, you know, in order to allow for a transition, uh, especially if you're in, inexperienced at this. Uh, you know, show up and, and kind of get the lay of the land before you uh, uh, start your shift. Okay. All right, weather. Uh, we do have uh, a forecast of unfavorable weather tomorrow. There's a forecast of thunderstorms. Uh, so we don't know exactly what we're going to do. Uh, I think the forecast currently shows uh, a high probability in the morning and it's supposed to taper off. So one option might be a delayed opening of the range, but it's kind of hard to predict since the weathermen don't even know what the weather's going to do. Uh, it may turn out to be a beautiful sunny day tomorrow for all I know. Uh, so what we're going to do is there's going to be up, an update published on the website and I will also post a flyer out here in the lobby at the NARAM information table on what's going on and how we're going to handle it. We're just going to have to handle it on a case-by-case on a -case basis. Okay. Okay, rule 10.4, we're not putting a restriction on distance. The only catch is you drive to the location, <laughs> we're not going to drive you there. Uh, so we also have two rangers on site uh, and we're, uh, those are available, you know, if it's in kind of a rough area. Uh, I may not go with you myself, I may designate someone, uh, but uh, Keith Vineyard is who's our uh, range, range equipment manager. He he's available. He's got some people working with him that are also available to uh, run that ranger and go out to a return. Uh, don't think it's going to be a huge problem recovering things. Uh, G streamer could be a problem, and uh, 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 parachute might be a problem as well. But that but no returns are required in parachute. <laughs> Unless like a record or something. Range safety. You want to take over at this point, Chad? Yeah. Am I going to the ours? Range safety. Safe out there. Yeah. You have to be safe. So. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Dave Fitch. <laughs> 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 hey, you owe me a Guinness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that bet never happened. Anyway, um, range safety, that's a normal setup range for an air. There's 18 pads in an arc. One thing we did that Ryan Coleman tried to do two years ago, it, it people kind of ignore it, and I, you don't think about it. We have two arcs beyond the standard 18 pads arc. And the red painted arc is at 30 feet, and the orange painted arc is at 15 feet. And the two things is when you're walking out to your pad, if you're on nine, 
stay outside of the appropriate arc as you walk around. Don't walk right next to the pads because guess what? That might be flying. Um, the other thing is, you know, when you raise your pad, if you're standing right by your pad, that's cool and everything, but back up behind whatever arc is appropriate. Obviously, the, the, the red arc is going to come into play tomorrow is with uh, Streamer. And on Friday with E-Scale, and if anybody's you know, doing E or above in their PMC. Is anybody doing cheese in their PMC? That'd be really cool shred to see. <laughs> Each nominated for something else, too. Uh, Joe's got three rails available out there. Um, the other thing is uh, with the timing pins, uh, pads 1 and 18 are good to go, except for G-Streamer. We have to clear the first three to be at 30 feet from the timing pin. So pads one through three and 16 through 18 are spot landing only. For G-Streamer tomorrow, you can only use pads four through 15 because of the safe distance. Otherwise, you're gonna have timers running into, they're gonna be timing a model and having a model go up right in front of them. So those, those three on both sides of the arc are off limits for G-Streamer. And since we won't have timers hopefully on Friday, because hopefully we're not finishing all the events on Friday because of weather, you know, that will be an issue on Friday. Um, John, it, as we've laid it out, and it wasn't really perfectly marked, but parking. Um, the contest range faces east. And when you're under the tent at the LCO table, it's facing east. So basically we've got a line that runs east and west of the, the tent, and, and you can't park south of there because your general wind direction, although it's not going to be tomorrow, is going to be from the southwest quadrant. So this line, everything south of this line, you know, the line that goes through the contest tent, no parking. Park up the hill towards the entrance and many rows back. Also, there's been people parking on the other side, like right next to the contest tent. Immediately north of the contest tent, you can't park there. We're not going to let people park there. So, if you park there, we're going to move you, <laughs> one way or another. We'll have that marked off in the morning. Yeah, oh, they're going to have it marked off, so. Don't cross the gate. Or you'll be blocked in by a dead cow. Yeah, by a cow just drop on you. Um, or be eaten. There's other thing with the ceiling issues. If, it, if the clouds are rolling in low, we're not going to be able to put up those high power, those you know, high performance, you know, 5,000 foot G streamer models. So we will wait, or you know, you just have to wait until it clears. We get, you know, breaking the ceiling or whatever. Um, as far as any kind of you know definitive plan, it is when it's clear to fly. Uh, obviously, spot landing. If the ceiling is too low for spot landing, what the heck are you flying in spot landing? <laughs> so, um, but yeah, we should be good to go on that. Other than the ceiling issues. Uh, the airport weather app that I, I've been using is saying uh, overcast tomorrow with the ceiling at 9,000. So that's not an issue as long as they put a guarantee behind that 9,000 and will not go below that. So we'll just have to take that, you know, play that by ear. But that is one concern. We're not going to fly if the ceiling's too low. How do I change this thing? This high tech thing. Ready for the next page? Yeah, you want to do the fall? I don't. I don't think I have a slide for that. I got a return, so I'll cover that. Okay. All right. Um, since I am thankfully not Dave Fitch, um, I, I am Chad Ring, your head RSO. Uh, the four RSOs this year are me, Rod, um, I get out here, uh, Guzik, and Matt Steele. Uh, we will have a guest appearance this year. Rod is not going to be able to be at the field on Thursday, so we're going to have to pull somebody off the bench to sub for Rod on Thursday. And I'd like to introduce Jennifer Mad Dog Bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> so don't make her mad early in the week, or you might have to pay for it on our day range shift. <laughs> so. Um, as far as the qualification stuff, just go over that kind of quickly. It's pretty much a standard of what we've done before. Uh, event by event is um, spot landing. You know, as long as it lands safe, it's good to go. There is no requirement for anything specific to be in the model, like a parachute, a streamer, or anything. It can be nose blow, it can be tumble. It has to land safe and it can't eject on the ground. Just basic common sense on that one. Uh, G streamers, uh, as well as parachute, What's a deployment? Well, we want to see something out of the tube. If it's completely down in the tube, it's going to be a no deploy DQ. As long as the parachute or streamer breaks the plane at the end of the tube and it's out in the airflow, we're going to qualify it. Now, what if we can't see it? Um, so it's like a G streamer. Well, we're going to listen to it. And if, any, if nobody else sees it, we're going to give you the benefit of the doubt and go ahead and qualify it. 
If it's found later crash into the ground, be an honest competitor, come back and go, you know what, that can't be flight points anymore and, and do that. But that's the only way to do it other than just impounding every rocket and that would get ridiculous. Um, that's probably all for G-Streamer. Um, D-Rocket Glide is Tuesday. Uh, D-Rocket Gliders, as long as it stays above the horizontal during boost, we're good. But with this, you know, D-Motors, if it's arcing over and it's thrusting downward under boost, that's unsafe boost. It's going to start coming downward. George? What if that happens to a scale model? It's going to get in cute as well. Or a plastic model. Yep. Unless, unless there's something specific about it. Uh, yeah, any, any motor thrusting down or thrusting downward under, under phase is unsafe. We're going to get horizontal up, you're good. Now, the glider's getting way out there and it's kind of looking like it, we're going to give the benefit of the doubt. We're not going to go, oh, you're 0.7 degrees under horizontal. You're gone. But uh, as far as what's a glide, if at some point during the flight it's, it's doing better than a one to one, means it's going more forward than down, it's qualified. If it you know, ejects and transitions, it just does a spiral, it's a no glide. So you have to do something just for a moment to get, to get your gravy on that one. <laughs> Uh, Wednesday, super ox, pretty self-explanatory. Um, you can't use carbon shafts or stuff like that for your super ox. That's in the rules. Uh, they're, you know, they will be measured to the nearest centimeter and then flown and brought back with the altimeters and, and opened up. It's a pretty clean, clean event. Uh, helicopter, the same thing as always. It has to do one rotation some point in time around its roll axis when it falls down to the ground. So it doesn't have to super spin, but it has to at least do one, one rotate, full rotation to be qualified as a helicopter. Parachute, as like I said, it just has to clear the tube. So it has to be part way out at least to be qualified for parachute. And Friday, scale altitude is scale altitude. It's just going to go up there. I mean, it has to recover safely. And PMC, uh, if it hits somebody, then we'll take into account who it hits. We'll determine, we'll determine whether you're qualified. Uh, there are certain people that are, that are earmarked already that if you hit them, even if you were last in static, you win the event. Are any of them wearing Cody shirts? So, anybody got any questions? That's pretty much the standard, nothing's new. Uh, John's going to give you the, the special NARAM rules. I shouldn't take more than a half an hour to go through all those. <laughs> Come on, that was funny. Uh, anybody got any questions? Pretty much the norm. The newbies and going, hey, okay, that's it, and everybody else has heard the same thing. Yes? In the unfortunate event that the scale object is lost, I know mean, you need returns, would you still get play points or no? Yeah, you would get, you'll get zero for your altitude score, and you'll get maximum damage points because you, you can't be rejudged for damage, but you would get you would still get flight points. It's quite as long as it's qualified. So, and that will happen on a few with this high altitude event. There will be a few scale models that do not come back. So, anybody else? Good. John's problem now. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. Uh, you mentioned we're short on timers, and as regards to multi round, can you remember last year during multi round parachute, there were times where we were waiting for timers and waiting for timers while timers were timing models at max long ago because of potential records? We're just having to could you max potentially time. just tell well, we'll, the timers to stop at the max? Well, we'll have them stop at the maximum time. And they need to verify that they both have achieved max before any of them stop. Yeah. Don't just go up at the max in case there was a problem with the other timer. Make sure that you're both at the max and then stop it. Right. So you're probably going to have some yeah. levels that... We don't have the people here to we're tied for a record. Sorry. Yeah, we, we don't. If you want to time for a record, what you could do... Well, I don't know. Do a record yeah. attempt at a later time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the primary try thing is a national day. contest, yeah. not a record attempt. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. is the national so, meet. This is not a record trial. Yeah, we're not. We're you not, can sanction those on your own. You're all available to do that anytime, any place. This is not here. <laughs> okay. So, yes. Sorry. Another timing question. Uh, I would just encourage everybody to remember there's a lap button on the timers. We got events where things go in and out of sight. Right. And, uh, so, so we're going to do a little bit of training on timing. I've got a document that I produced that we'll will hand off to the chief timer. There's going to be a chief timer on each shift who will be an experienced person and work with any inexperienced people who are timing. And uh, the NAR has bought a bunch of new stopwatches. They're all the same. So everybody be working with the same equipment. Okay? Yep. All right.
Returns. Um, not all of our events require returns two hours after the range closure. Now, if you're out in the field in Walnut Grove and it's, it's you know, you've got 15 minutes left in your, uh, in, in your time interval to get that model back to a contest official, we're not going to be on the field for two hours waiting. We're going to be back here at the hotel. What you need to do is you pick up your cell phone and you call me. There's my phone number. Uh, write it down and you may call me and I will tell you, bring the model to me at the hotel so we can mark you return. Don't get in your car and start driving <laughs> 75 miles an hour down 550 <laughs> because you won't make it to the other end. <laughs> So, everybody got my cell phone number? Okay, I'll, I'll give it a minute. He will be changing that after Friday night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's totally a totally different number. number. <laughs> oh, he's on YouTube now, too. Oh, no. <laughs> you should have told me he was going to be there so I could have blocked it. <laughs> Well, I guess I am <laughs> changing my phone number. <laughs> phone number. Uh, well, it, it, it's part of the territory. Yep. All right. <laughs> Open spot landing. We'll measure to the nearest one centimeter. We're going to uh, put a pair of measurers out there. They're going to have a radio. We're not going to put flight cards out onto the field. Flight cards are going to stay in the tent. So what we want you to do, you fly your model, it lands, you go and stand by it. We will come to you. Maybe not necessarily in order, but we will get to you. We'll try and do it in order, but we won't promise. So people will be and, standing uh, in the recovery area? Pardon? People will be standing in an active recovery area? Yes. Yeah. Same way if you're out on recovery, coming back from recovery, you don't go out two miles around and come back to the range press. You always walk right back the same line. Yeah, but you're those models there. don't have a target. <laughs> For a size of spotlight, I want you to watch really closely how to avoid that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Try to do it again? Not everybody's smart like that. Try it the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I mean, just, just stand by the model because they're going to have to know. Okay, whose model is this? They don't want it. They, they're not going to pick it up to to find out what the NAR number is on the model. So they're going to have to talk to you. So just stand there until they come to you. And you know, if a model comes screaming down at you, step out of the way. <laughs> yes. Uh, will you be telling us tomorrow the distance? I might tell you. I might. Um, how many cases of Guinness are in this? <laughs> and that will work for each of us. <laughs> you might even tell them how it's marked. And you will be made, you will be made from the tip of the nose cone. Tip of the nose cone. So make sure your nose cone is pointing at the spot when it lands. <laughs> your model nicer than that before it does help. You, you might want, well, you know, tip of the nose cone could be hazardous to some of the measurers. There are some big brown things out there. <laughs> and I've been known a couple of times to stick things into them. It gets measured to that. <laughs> yeah, it gets measured to that. Now, I'm just going to have to deal with it. <laughs> um, okay, let's see here. Did I miss a slide? No, I didn't. Okay, range closing. Check-in will close 15 minutes prior to range closing. If you've checked in your model and you're on the pad at range clo closing, we will allow you one attempt to ignite your motor and get your flight off. If you have a misfire, you're done. Altimeter rules. Okay. Uh, this applies to the half A Super Rock and E scale altitude. All models need to have the three vent holes. The other thing is the altimeter must be enclosed from the time it leaves check in.
until when it comes back to return. If the altimeter comes out of the model, uh, it will be a DQ for uh, the right words here for an event rule reason because the the, rule, the altimeter rules require that the altimeter be enclosed in the rocket for the whole whole flight. Yes. If the altimeter has to be removed before you fly, can you simply recheck it? <laughs> yeah. You know how some yeah. Yeah. Turn it on. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, your, your check-in procedure is going to require you to go through the procedure for that altimeter, okay? Then you put the altimeter into the model and close it up. But I'm saying from that point to launch, if it right. has to be open for some reason, you it's not a DQ. They can recheck in. Go back and check in. They, yeah, they can go back to check in. Yes, correct. PMC scale and static judging, remember to include that required data table and photo. Turn in deadline tonight, 10 p.m. What room? Is that Ozark? Uh, Ozark A and B. Sorry. Sorry. They might smell a little like beer in there, don't, don't let that concern you. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the hotel was nice enough to put brand new carpeting into that room and we initiated it last night. <laughs> Okay, Friday's going to be a short day. We are closing the range at 1.30. So we are going to allow motor check-in at the hotel for scale and PMC. That will occur during the public viewing session uh, where, the, where we open the doors up and let the public go in and look at the models. So we would give you the option. We'll have a contest official here to check in motors. And it's going to be a short day for Friday. <laughs> Range communications. Yes. Um, were you going to remind folks that they have to have their vent holes in their scale model prior to turn in tonight? Good. Yeah. Good point. Uh, when you turn in your your E scale altitude model, the vent holes must be installed in the model. Uh, otherwise. Uh, I'm not sure what, were, what was the result. I would of that love to drill it later and, and I would uh, nail them for damage. I would give max yeah. damage points. Uh, you, you, you'd get hit for da for damage. I'm you, sure. You by change the it. You damage the model. Yeah. I'd nail them. Yeah. So don't take that chance. Range communications. FRS channel 5-8 is the official range communications channel. Please stay off of it. We will be using it to do things like talk to the to the uh, uh, open spot landing people. It will also be used to communicate with the sport range in case they have an issue over there that they need to communicate to us. So we'll have a radio at LCO. Uh, yes. Dash eight is just a privacy code, meaning they need to stay off all channel five. Channel five. Oh, period. Channel five. Correct. Okay. Yeah. They'll yeah. still yeah. stomp on you. You just won't hear them. Ah, uh, okay. All right. All right. Okay. So channel five off limits. There we go. Pad assignments. Uh, we're not going to permit stacking uh, this year. In other words, what that means is. If you want a specific pad and someone's on it, uh, you cannot uh, put your flight card on that pad until the pad is clear and the uh, clipboard has come back to pad assignment. So we're not going to do that. Uh, we will have a results laptop at the returns table. Hey, Jack, can I make a, a comment about those clipboards coming back? Especially for spot landing, can you make sure that those clipboards come back as soon as the flight is gone? They don't need to hold the card on that clipboard until it's been measured. We'll pull pull the cards off of the clipboards as soon as the flight is done, and we'll put it on a returns clipboard, 
and then the, uh, uh, the the people who are measuring they're going to be doing radio communication okay and they'll you know look up the card you know write the data on it then send it off to uh, to data input so as soon as the flight's done the car will go back to uh, Pat Simon. Um Going back to the FRS radio channels for a second is the sport range also running on FRS radio channel? No. And what channel is it? So we can see that. Same one. Yeah. It's it's a a this five. is this is the communi Con 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 sport yes. range. The okay. communication with between the sport range and the contest range in the event of a of difficulties, channel five dash eight. Okay. That that's why we we've, we've got that. Also for communication of the contest range people with themselves as well. All right. Food and drink, okay. Uh, we did have a food vendor yesterday. He didn't show up today, and he's probably not going to show up during the week. So bring your own and uh, keep yourself hydrated. We will have water out there at both ranges uh, for you to drink. Uh, I guess there's one more thing I could do. I guess we could talk about about this. Uh, there's there's your craftsmanship judges. Um, we we were going to use Mark McReynolds as the uh, chief craftsmanship judge, and uh, he uh, he had uh, uh, a family emergency, so he could not come to Narum this year. So I've asked Chan Stevens to do it, and uh, he's going to do it, I believe. I got an email from him saying he would. There he is right there. And we got it, Steve. The other judges are Chris Flanagan, Rob Justice, Steve Cristal. I haven't talked to Steve yet. Hopefully he's, he's willing to do that. It's fine, John. You've been drafted, but <laughs> Uh, Pat, Patrick McCarthy, Randy Bodeway, and Sean Guzek. Uh, your R&D judges this year, we have four. Mark Wise, who's the lead, Ryan Coleman, Patrick Peterson, and Donald Carson. Contest jury, Keith Vineyard, Lila Schmaker, and Bob Kaplow. Chris Kidwell's the data manager, as usual. We have... We have uh, the Civil Air Patrol on site. They're going to be assisting us with various range tasks. Uh, hopefully, they're going to fill in a lot of the gaps on timing. And uh, as you can see from looking at this table, we do have a few gaps in timing. So we're, we're trying to count them to fill in. Do we have short days every day? Four. Four. Wednesday's the only the rotation day. schedule makes it look like we can knock off at 2 o'clock every day. No, it was 1.30 every day, except Wednesday's 3.30. Except Wednesday. Except Wednesday goes to 3.30. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Wednesday goes to 3.30. Yeah. 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 What are you doing? Mine? Something <laughs> wrong. <laughs> and, uh, let's see. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, so the, this is a more relaxed narrow in terms of the time commitment. But we have given you some challenging events, and I did that on purpose because this is the heavy metal narrow. So, and we are steely my uh, steely eyed missile men and missile women too. So, yeah, not not to leave them out. Questions? Yeah, uh, we have the, you were talking about photograph for a scale and PMC. I knew about that for scale. Scale, not, not PMC. PMC. Not Only PMC. Only scale. I was, I was concerned yeah. about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In the event of a sub 5,000 foot ceiling on scale uh, altitude day, uh, are, are, is the event going to be judged by static? Nope, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> 
It will not happen this time. Well, it'll be judged by static points. But no contest points awarded. We will give awards, but there won't be points. Got it. Okay. Oh. Bo Bo says it must make a safe, stable flight. Well, you never, if you never launch it, you didn't make a safe, stable flight. The magazine articles. Ah, magazine articles. Now you got to act like Tom. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let's see. You're gonna remember how Tom meets Tom. <laughs> now, people. <laughs> I have a magazine to produce, and I'm here yeah. to twist your arm. So, oh, sorry, set up. Hang on. Brian said sorry, set up. I'm contacting people because I'm right to be rocket Yeah, I'm right to be rocket Taken care of. There are, well, he got all of them, but he got some. He didn't get all of them. There are some openings still. And I didn't bring the list with me. Why don't you just run through it and see who's here? Okay, who's writing articles for Sport Rocketry? Hold your hand up. She's there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Who's got, who's got spot? We may need somebody for spot. Yeah, so I think we need somebody for spot landing. I have a, I have a list which I forgot to bring with me. I had to forget something, and that was it. <laughs> Does anyone want a new spot? Uh, no one wants to take the technical event. <laughs> I saw a G streamer. Uh, G streamer? Ro and you said Rocket Glide. Rocket Glide. Super Rock, right? Super Rock. Here, Petey, who's helicopter? No, no helicopter. Are you helicopter? Uh, back to the low ceiling or scale altitude, what if we configure the level to fly under the ceiling? That's fine. Okay, I thought you were just going to like outright call the event and not allow it to fly. Well, I mean, is that figured out on Friday with, I mean, you know, we can't give a solution for a 3,863-foot ceiling and another solution for 3,932-foot ceiling. It's going to be what it's going to be. We can fly it or we can fly, you know, some of it, I don't know. I'd love to figure out the solution to that. We'll have to see what the ceiling is. I yeah. mean, or whether models could be My tuned. inclination is, if if the ceiling is under 5,000, we should not fly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unless that's you can demonstrate that your model is going to be under that ceiling. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 Can you do can you detune it? Can you tune it? Yes, it should be. I can fly it demonstrates the ceiling. The form under the ceiling, you can't rest, not allow us to fly because there's a fear we might pose. That's right. That's yeah. right, Chan. It's like getting into a waiver launch. You can't, you know, if you've got a model close to a waiver, you've got to prove that it's not going to bust a waiver. Same thing here. Right, but with a waiver, the flyer can come to the RSO or the LCO and show the data on the model to say, I ought to be allowed to fly it. Well, yeah, but that does not that solution does not allow everyone to fly. That's, that's the problem. Uh, that's the problem with strategy. So that should be permitted. If you can show that your model's going to be under the cloud deck, right. when it flies, yep. for example, you may choose to fly an SDC 98 in the model instead of an Aerotech or Apogee E68, and you can show that your model is going to be under that cloud deck, then you should be allowed to fly it during the <coughs> That would be similar to choosing not right. similar to choosing not to fly with a thermal, and then it rains out. Can we discuss this? <laughs> Why don't we discuss this later in the week and we post this as it. judging? All right, yeah. Rick, I have to I'm, view I'm it. not going to commit to an answer. Nobody right knows now. what the hell Friday's going to be right now. So it might Thursday, be a beautiful day. Yeah, it's Thursday will have a good idea of the weather forecast for Friday, <laughs> and have them post it on the wall when you're in there looking for beautiful models before pickup. Then you're going to know what we're going to do. This is also going to be a problem tomorrow for G Streamer. But G Streamer has the option of flying Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. Right. Friday is the last day of the contest year. There is no option. Is yeah. Hey, John, have you got a plan B, though, if you decide tomorrow that G Streamer is going to fly? Do you know what your first choice for the event that's going to plug in its place is going to be? No, no we're, not, we're, not, we're not going to move events forward. Push them back, not forward. Right. Right. Some have to build. Some people have to build. 
uh, for those of you who don't, who don't know me, Mark Wise, I'm judging r and I've asked everybody who's presented, okay, um, I hate microphones. I can fill a room with them. Oh, no, no, Mark. Mark, standard gravy. <clears throat> well, I already know the day thing is on, so I don't have to do this. All right. All right. Um, I'm Mark, judging R&D. You saw on the presentation schedule, please get P PDFs preferred if you're using slide decks, PowerPoint if you've got something embedded. I gave you a deadline. I just noticed this evening I'm having some trouble with my NAR web account, my, with my email account. So please, when you send it, stand by for a receipt from me. If I don't receipt for it, come corner me, something. We'll make sure, I, I, just, I, don't, I, don't, want, I don't want us to go in, in uh, Wednesday and Thursday night and discover that, that you sent the report that sent the slides, but that I never got them. So please, please confirm receipt. You don't have to send it return receipt requested, but just when you've sent it, if I haven't received it for it by the end of that day, um, leave a note, come find me, ping me something, because I don't, I don't, I don't want a technical glitch to get in the way of your successful <coughs> presentation. Bob. Two questions. Uh, one, what is the deadline? And two, uh, what is the form factor? Is it width and height? Uh, standard preferred. Uh, it, it'll, it'll, it'll do widescreen as well, but uh, but I think we're looking here at a standard format. As far as deadline, <coughs> please, uh, one hour before that evening's presentations are scheduled to begin. So that's uh, 6 p.m. Wednesday. I'm sorry, 7 p.m. Wednesday, 6 p.m. Thursday. And again, that's <coughs> just, excuse me, just to make sure everything is in the system because also something else I'm finding here is that the uh, the Wi-Fi the, the at least my web access is not particularly swift so I want to make I want to make sure that, that we're not in that last second panic that's probably my fault before you before things go up so uh, other than that this isn't my microphone it's not my room let me turn it back okay if you've got if you've got any R&D related questions please I'll be at the back of the room after this but I don't want to monopolize the microphone for those of you who aren't in that event <laughs> Are there additional questions? Time to go spray, finish spray painting your models. <laughs> yeah, time, time to go turn in your spray your your scale models. That begins in seventeen minutes, and you have until ten o'clock to get it done. So, and. Don't make me come and twist your arm to write an article for Sport Rocketry. Get the dang list up. <laughs> <laughs>